Hey everybody, Kate Krause here with the Research Medical Library at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Today we're going to do a quick overview of the new PRISMA 2020 checklist for systematic reviews and meta-analyses. This new 2020 checklist was actually published in 2021. It updates the older 2009 version. The checklist is simply a list of all the topics you need to report in your article. It's sort of like an outline. Prisma updated the old version of the checklist for two main reasons. They found that authors weren't providing enough information in their reviews, so they expanded the checklist to require a lot more detail. The second reason they updated the checklist is that the older version was really geared towards research questions about interventions, and it wasn't really applicable to other types of research questions like prevention, economic analysis, and qualitative questions. You can download the checklist from the PRISMA website at prisma-statement.org. The checklist is over here on the right-hand side. I'm going to show you a version where I've highlighted the changes from the older version. There are four columns. In the left-hand column, we have a list of the sections and topics to put in your review. For example, we've got in the results section at the bottom, you need to list your studies, you need to describe their characteristics, and how you synthesize the study results, and a lot more. The second column is really just a numerical list of the items. In the middle column, there's a, there's a lot more detail about each of the topics you need to report. For example, in the discussion section, You need to give an interpretation of your results, you need to talk about any limitations of your review, and state the implications your review has for practice and policy. And in the last column, all the way on the right-hand side, there's space to list the page numbers where you've included each of the items. This helps you keep track of everything, but it's also here because some journals now require that you upload this checklist with the page numbers filled out along with your manuscript. This makes it easier for the editors and peer reviewers. Now we don't have time to go over everything in this checklist, but let's run through some of the main items and major changes. The first three sections are pretty self-explanatory. Title, abstract, introduction. The only change here is the format of the abstract. Prisma wants you to use a structured abstract. Here's an example from PubMed. You can see here that the abstract is sectioned out to background methods, results, conclusions. This makes it a lot easier for people to read than one big long paragraph. You can download the checklist for the abstracts at the Prisma website because yes, Prisma also has a checklist just on how to write an abstract. For the methods section of the checklist, there have been a lot of changes. This is the part of your review where you describe how you chose your studies, how you extracted data from them, how you assessed their quality, and how you synthesized and analyzed the results. This section has added a few new items and now requires a lot more information. You can see um, for the search strategy, for example, you now have to present the full search strategies for all the databases. In the past, people have usually just included the Medline search string. I've highlighted some of the other changes in blue because they are all the same. So in these three sections, the selection process, the data collection process, and the study of uh, risk of bias, where you evaluate the quality of the studies, all of these three things have the same new change, where you need to include information about how many people did each step of these processes and what kinds of software you used. At least two people should perform each of these steps independently to prevent bias. This is why you can't write a systematic review by yourself. You need at least two authors. The, these last three sections 
aren't new, but they have so much more information that they require. Um, it's a completely different ballgame. So for synthesis methods, reporting bias assessment, certainty assessment, this is all how you handled any missing data or data conversions, how you visually represented the data, like using forest plots, what kinds of statistical synthesis you used, and how you examine heterogeneity. In the results section, this is the part of the manuscript where you discuss the studies you selected, their characteristics, their quality, and your analysis. There's um, some interesting changes here. For example, you now have to um, explain why you didn't include any studies that might seem like they should have been included. That's something that's completely new. There's a lot of changes in the results of synthesis section also. It used to be just one line. Now it is several different lines. Some of these items are only relevant if you're doing a meta-analysis. For example, let's see here, in 20A, you now have to include a risk of bias table for each synthesis. What this means is, if you do a systematic review and include 10 studies in it, you present a risk of bias table for those 10. If you then go on to do a meta-analysis as well and only include four of those studies, you need to present another risk of bias table for only those four. The discussion section is exactly the same. This is the part where you give an interpretation of your results, discuss the limits of your project, and state the implications for practice, policy, and future research. The last section, Other Information, is completely new. It's basically administrative information, like where you registered your protocol, if there are any financial disclosures, and if you have made the data available anywhere. So that's the Prisma checklist in a nutshell. There are a lot of changes from the older version. Be sure you read the checklist before you start conducting your systematic review so you know what you're aiming for and how to conduct your systematic review project. The checklist is really helpful, but sometimes you need a little bit more information about how to do some of the things listed in it. You can find help on the PRISMA website. If you click on the tab that says PRISMA Statement, you'll see several documents here that are helpful. The E&E, &E, the Explanation and Elaboration, is a really, really helpful resource. It'll bring you to a 40-page article in BMJ that has explanation of what to do and short little examples for each item. Let's take a look at one of the items just so you can get an idea of what kind of help it gives you. For example, if we scroll down to the section on risk of bias assessment, item number 11, it gives you some explanation of why you should do that. It explains some of the terminology, the different types of risk of bias, and it suggests some tools that you can use, sometimes software or tables, various things, um, and how to write about it in your report. It also gives you some really great um, kind of short examples on how people have written about each of the items. This is really great. There's another tool that people like to use. Back at the PRISMA website, if we click on checklist, there is an expanded checklist here at the bottom. A lot of people really like to use this. It's basically the same thing as the checklist, but instead of two pages, it is about nine pages long. It lists the same things in the same order, but it gives you a lot more explanation on, on how to do each of the items. So, that is the PRISMA 2020 checklist in a nutshell. There's a lot more in the PRISMA website. You might want to explore it a little bit more. We just don't have time to go over absolutely everything in here, but it's a great resource. You should check it out. For more information on systematic reviews, there's a number of different things that you can do. We have a help guide at this URL here. We have a YouTube channel where we've recorded some short videos like this one. And if you're affiliated with MD Anderson, you can always email me at kjkraus at mdanderson.org. 
I hope this overview has helped, and uh, good luck everybody with your systematic review projects.